In an ever-changing world, Life Changes Network presents the authentically entertaining voice of truth and inspiration. This is Life Changes with Filippo, with the always unforgettable, ever insightful conversations that captivate our fascination and insatiability for the inspiring moments of real life journeys. As we, as one, strive for higher planes of existence and a better understanding of our true selves and the world in which we live, always remembering life changes. This is radio like you've never felt before. Good for all and all for good. And now, your host. The MC, the master of change, Filippo Voltaggio. Ciao, everyone. I am Filippo Voltaggio, and this is Life Changes with Filippo. Our guest today is Barry Farber. Now, he is no stranger to all of you, I'm sure, or most of you, I would trust, being that he has the kind of, of credentials on radio that he has. Actually, not just on radio. This man has been such a driving force on so many fronts, and he is uh, an interviewer's dream because... Uh, he has interviewed so many people and, and personally to me, he is, um, he's like a, a man after my own heart because he's so much about the stories. Let me tell you a little bit about him. Uh, as smooth, as civilized as Jack Daniels whiskey. I love that. And with just as much kick, Barry Farber is one of America's legendary talk show hosts. Raised in Greensboro, North Carolina, he drank in with his mother's milk the art of storytelling and of painting memorable images with a gentle southern accent. But before leaving college, this knight errant had been editor of a daily newspaper, a wrestler, a steel worker, a representative of American college students in Yugoslavia and Brazil, an interpreter for units of the Chinese Nationalist Navy, and a Phi Beta Kappa student. His radio career began in New York City when he was hired as a producer. Barry soon became a familiar and beloved voice on the Big Apple's airwaves, hosting his own shows on WINS, WOR, WMCA, and WABC. Barry went national in 1990, and only a year later was named Talk Show Host of the Year, by the National Association of Radio Talk Show Hosts. He's done a lot more than that, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. I am Filippo, and this is Life Changes with Filippo. We'll be right back with Barry Farber right after this. Clean water is not enough. Reverse osmosis, distilled water, and most bottled waters are devoid of naturally occurring minerals. They are acidic, unstructured, and hard to absorb, and rob minerals from the body. Ionways ionizers produce a super abundant supply of powerful antioxidants in each glass. Ionized water has a reduced molecular cluster size and a negative charge, hydrating you up to six times better. Water from an Ionways ionizer will help you restore your body to its natural pH balance, boosting your vitality. And ionized water more effectively flushes acidic toxins from within your body. Drink the healthiest water available today. Ionways Water Systems, their water changes everything. To learn more about Ionways Water Systems and how you can own one today, visit our website at lifechangeswithfilippo.com and click on our sponsor page. 
true performance takes more than just working out. Every day we demand more from our body. But what does your body demand? Hunger is not your body's call for empty calories. It's your body asking for nutrients it's lacking. It's time to reward your body with Boku Superfood, made from the world's finest organic ingredients, vitamins, minerals, amino acids, and essential trace nutrients, all developed naturally and organically from nature's most nutrient-dense foods. Boku Superfood is quite possibly the best thing you can feed your body. So listen to your body. Reward it with pure, raw, beautiful food. Boku Superfood. What is the one thing that every man, woman, and child have in common? Life changes. Are you experiencing change at home, at work, at school, or in other areas of your life? Are you looking to make a change, maybe a new job or place to live? How about getting in on a conversation that matters? Join host Filippo on the top-rated BBS radio network show, Life Changes with Filippo, live every Monday night at 7 p.m. For more information, visit lifechangeswithfilippo.com. That's Filippo, F-I-L-I-P-P-O.com. We're back. I am Filippo, and I am looking forward to this interview with uh, Barry Farber. He is a, a man about stories. He was, or, well, he still is in many ways. He, uh, uh, he is doing so many things that are inspiring so many people. And uh, he, he was the Rush Limbaugh before there was a Rush Limbaugh, probably before Rush even knew he wanted to be a Rush Limbaugh. Uh, it, it, there are so many things I could say about him. And I, I have to say that I connected with him in a way that I hadn't connected with people uh, since I had a conversation with a man who inspired me to be on radio. Uh, I was already actually on radio doing interviews. If some of you may remember, I was doing a show called Filippo and the Chef. And the co-host was a chef friend of mine who would cook while I uh, talked about what he was doing and make jokes, crack jokes, and, and we'd banter back and forth. And little by little, I wanted something more. And I wanted to do interviews. And so to make it work with this Italian-American cooking show, I started looking out uh, seeking Italian American celebrities and 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 people of note that 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 could understand the mentality of of the cooking, like why this particular food and what was the food that your grandmother used to make, and and it was it was quite saucy, I have to say, and it was quite engaging and interesting, and we did very well, and it was out there for a while, for a few years, and then I interviewed an older Italian gentleman who is still an accordion player. Now, this man had performed for huge audiences, had been on TV for many, many shows back in the day when accordions were more hip. Uh, he had performed for kings and queens on, 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 on I think, the, uh, the, the QE2 for Queen Elizabeth. And, I, I mean, his, his, what he had done... Um, for himself as a, as an accordionist from this little guy that grew up in, 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 you know, in a little town in, in, in America, uh, grew up Italian American playing this big accordion. He, he did really well. And so I was interested in uh, some of these aspects and I'd heard interviews of him. He interviewed, he, he, in his interviews, he shared how he performed for all these people, what it was like and how fun it was and blah, blah, blah. And, and the, the, the best performance he ever did was over here and over there and all of that stuff. So when I interviewed him, I expected him to say a lot of the same things. I expected his story to be the same story he told every other interview I had heard him do. And I said to him, so what was it, what is it like for you still today performing for these audiences? And in his frail voice, he said to me, you know, Filippo, we are like the river of life. Energy flows through me, through my accordion, onto the audience, through music. And they feel it. They take it into their heart and they feel it and they push it out right back at me. And I get it on the stage and it flows through me and I push it out again to them. And he says, it's this love that we have for each other that just flows through the music and that's what it's all about and he went on for maybe 20 minutes and I just sat there with my mouth open listening to this and I said to him at the end thank you for sharing that with me but can I ask you what made you say that when all I was asking you was what's it like still performing this day 
And he said, because you, Filippo, that's what your heart is asking. You're not like all the other interviewers. And I was, I, I was torn because, I mean, I was touched and I was torn because the show was Filippo and the chef. We're talking about Italian food and cooking. And he was right. What I wanted to talk about was exactly that. And so was born soon after the desire to have these conversations like we are having today with our guest Barry Farber about life changes and how we change each other's life and how life is changing for each of us. Mark, I think you know that story, right? I do know that story. And, you know, it, it's so poignant uh, of a story in terms of relating to who you are. Um, not only in having inspired this journey, which I'm now a part of and, and is, is our collective journey, but also who you are in terms of how you relate to the people you talk to, interview, discuss, the people you come in contact with, the people you entertain and sing for at, you know, the live events and, and such. Um, you know, that analogy of, of the river and, and that story, the explanation of the dance, of the exchange of energy mm, mm. is, uh, is so apt. And, uh, and yet what a great day to talk about it with Barry on because, uh, you know, the pressure's on. You gotta, you know, step up your game here. <laughs> well, let's just do it right now then. Actually, let me tell you a little bit more about Barry. Uh, Barry is a writer. He's a journalist. He's a nationally syndicated talk show host. He's an army veteran. He's an advocate for Jewish charities. In 1991, Farber won the title of Talk Show Host of the Year, and he was recently named among the top ten radio talk hosts of all time by Talkers Magazine. Now, uh, Farber's books include How to Learn Any Languages. You know, get this, Mark. He knows 26 languages. I mean, this is just this is just amazing. Um, uh, so the, the books include How to Learn Any Language, which is the leading book in that field worldwide. So without any further ado, welcome, Barry, to Life Changes with Filippo. Filippo, you've changed my life in the past four and a half minutes. That was, as Mark says, such a poignant story. And I tell you, Italy and the Italian language changed my life more than I can tell you. May I, may I tell you the story? Please. Uh, uh, I grew up loving the idea of knowing foreign languages, and I couldn't wait to study my first one, which was Latin in the ninth grade. Mm. Well, I got into Latin class, and I thought learning a language, I'd never done it before. I thought you know, all you had to learn were words. Mm. And Latin, uh, they had strange things called nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, ablative, grammar, complicated grammar. And I loved it. I tried, but I sank like a rock. Mm. And that summer, that next summer, I went to Will's Bookstore in Greensboro, North Carolina, and I found a book that changed my life. It was Hugo's Italian Simplified. <laughs> and I opened it, and I learned to my amazement and delight that Italian it's just Latin with all the difficulty removed. <laughs> like, like you, you've been a, on a chef show. You know how you fillet the bone out of a fish? Right. The Italian language merely filleted the difficulty out of <laughs> Latin. Uh, uh, Italian nouns did not decline. Italian's verbs changed a little bit, but not nearly as nastily as the Latin verbs did. I bought that book, and I went through that Italian language like a hot knife through butter, and that started me. That started me. I started studying languages very young, and I was just too lazy to quit. <laughs> Barry, I love that story. I have a quick question for you now. Uh, allora possiamo parlare in italiano durante questa intervista, no? Le parla benissimo italiano. Dove ha imparato a parlare italiano così bene? Beh. But io sono italiano, and if we wanted to, uh, 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 we can uh, parler un peu en français tam, eh, aussi. Ah, j'ai un français, tout le monde parle français, n'est-ce pas? C'est la langue mondiale. Mais lei parle inglese senza accento. 
I, I, the, Barry is saying that I speak English without an accent. Well, technically, Barry, I was born in this country, though I didn't know I was in this country because my family spoke Italian to me before I went to school. So I grew up with both languages. Well, uh, talk of, you've made me think of people who have changed my life and changed other lives. Um, if you want to hear about one, I'll be happy to tell you. You know, actually, I think I'm going to want to hear about more than one, but we're going to do that right after uh, this break because uh, I, think we're gonna, I think we're going to need more time than just uh, a, a minute here. So, so I, I want to tell people, though, that uh, they can learn more about you where and your books. Where can they get them? Well, the, the name of the book is Cocktails with Molotov, uh, and they can get the book on Amazon. Uh, and I write for World Net Daily, WND, and they've got a little thing all about me there. But there's no, you've already told everything there is about me. My <laughs> oh, right, 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 right. There's so much more. And we'll be talking to Barry more right after we come back. This is Filippo, and you're listening to Life Changes with Filippo on the BBS Radio Network. A healthy new you is on its way, and it starts with laminine. Laminine is a natural, synergistic superfood that contains most known vitamins, important trace minerals, all eight essential amino acids, and other nutritional elements. Laminine is nature's most perfect food and the perfect combination of life-giving sustenance sourced from land, sea, and plants. The key ingredient in laminine is a normal adaptogen called fibroplast growth factor, which helps to create a balance or normalization and aids in restoring the body to its natural state of homeostasis. Regular use of laminine has been known for reducing the signs of aging by giving you healthier skin, decreasing the effects of stress, increasing physical, mental, and emotional strength, increasing libido, and it's also been believed to elevate serotonin levels, thus improving mood aiding in brain function, and increasing alertness and focus, all while developing an overall sense of well-being. Are you ready for the healthy new you? For more information, email trylaminine now at gmail.com. That's laminine, L-A-M-A-N-I-N-E. Or call 818-462-6782. That's 818-462-6782. There are self-help seminars costing thousands of dollars guaranteeing miraculous transformations. There are compelling speakers and life-changing weekend experiences where you can walk on fire. They all deliver revelations that guarantee you'll come back for the more expensive revelations filled with even greater wonder next month on Fiji. We get addicted to positive, heartfelt, expensive theater. What we really need is a jump start, an awakening. Someone who can give us a reminder that everything we need lies within. Through inspiration and practical knowledge, Dorothy Donahue helps people get grounded and motivated, inspired and energized. It's not just words and affirmations and the power of intention. It's a mindset brought about by a tangible, transcendental experience, an audiovisual, physical, spiritual experience that helps us realize we transform ourselves. We get tools to become the conscious co-creators of lives of unlimited potential. Find out more. Go to DorothyDonahue.com. Listen to these words. He would not be beat by forces too fierce for man, woman, or beast. As the going got tougher, his courage increased. It's a little story with a big message, a message that speaks to children of all ages. It's about believing in yourself, overcoming obstacles, and never giving up. It's been called a masterpiece, one of the finest children's books ever written, and a true children's classic. Shadow Stevens has been called Dr. Seuss for the 21st century. His big little book, The Big Galoot, is a story about bullying. Bullying has become an American epidemic, and The Big Galoot talks about it in a way that will touch the heart of a child of four and a grandfather of 104. It's the story of a little boy with size 42 hands, the biggest hands anyone has ever seen, and the kids laugh at him, then the laughter turns mean. They mock him and trip him, and much worse. But throughout it all, Warren Galoot says... I'm a galoot, but I have good luck. You can't get me down. I never give up. A second grader named Chandler said, I thought it was the best funny book I have seen in my life. And we agree. Whoopi Goldberg said, This is a great story. Bravo, Shadow. 
The Big Galoot is available now as an ebook exclusively on Kindle Fire on Amazon for only three ninety eight. We strongly urge you to get it for your children, your children's children, or as a gift to yourself. Its message speaks to all of us. Have good luck and never give up. Go to Amazon.com and search for The Big Galoot by Shadow Stevens. You are listening to Life Changes with Filippo on the BBS Radio Network with the master of change, Filippo Voltaggio. You can hear tonight's show and all our past shows on our archive, which include luminaries such as New York Times best-selling author Gary Zukov, Oscar-nominated actress Mariel Hemingway, Comedy Central's favorite Kyle Cease, international recording artists The Green Children, and radio and TV personality Shadow Stevens. Visit our website at lifechangeswithfilippo.com or join our community at lifechangesnetwork.com and email your comments and questions to info at lifechangesnetwork.com or comment via Twitter at I am Filippo and on Facebook at Life Changes with Filippo. That's Filippo, F-I-L-I-P-P-O. Well, we're back. I am Filippo, and our guest today is Barry Farber, and we're talking about the book Cocktails with Molotov, an odyssey of unlikely detours. Listen to what's been said about the book. After reading Cocktails with Molotov, you'll wonder if there's anything Barry Farber hasn't done, if there's anywhere he hasn't been. From a young age, Farber has had a knack for being in the right place at the right time. In Cocktails with Molotov, Barry Farber's collection of real-life short stories, you'll read of his encounters with Alfred Hitchcock, the King of Albania, and Buzz Aldrin. I mean, Barry, tell me a story. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, you've uh, really uh, inspired me, and you brought some of the best ones to the top. Um, the book, uh, Cocktails with Molotov, had, when I wrote it, I made two rules for myself. Every story had to be true. I mean, mm. stomp down, authentic, true. Mm. And every story had to be unbelievable, or at mm. least hard to believe. Let me give you an example. Uh, Charles Fawcett, uh, American Episcopalian aristocrat from Charleston, South Carolina, who married and divorced six Jewish women within 18 months. Uh, to save their lives. Oh. Now, who is there anybody who can live without hearing the rest of that story? Right. They married and divorced six Jewish women within 18 months to save their lives. Mm -hmm. He was an American studying art in Paris. World War II broke out. The Germans took Paris. The, uh, Hitler did not want any trouble with America yet. So he passed the word down, treat the Americans in France correctly. If they're studying, let them keep on studying. When word of that got out, the French underground knocked on Charles's door, the door of his dormitory, and said, Mr. Fawcett, you are an American, correct? You are over the age of 18. You are not married. Would you help us out? And they had a system worked out with the American embassy. The State Department in Washington knew nothing about this, and they would not have allowed it. There were humanitarians in the American embassy who knew that the Jews were in trouble very early in the German occupation. And they arranged for Charles to marry and divorce, marry, divorce, marry, divorce. The only thing that stopped him was he went back to America one month before the war broke out. Mm. Uh, he didn't meet all six women. He never had a honeymoon. It was all done on paperwork, but that was the least of what he did wow. for the war effort. He drove British flyers and stolen ambulances down from uh, France, occupied France, into Vichy France so they could be ferried over into Spain and back to England so they could fight again. He uh, smuggled microfilm out of France when he was headed back to America. What a guy. Modest, nicest guy you'd ever want to meet. And I said, Charles, uh, uh, what were, you af were you afraid of anything? He said, yeah, I was afraid of letting Varian Fry down. He was the mastermind of the operation. And uh, 
Uh, Charles always smiled when anybody told that story about marrying and divorcing all the Jewish women. He said, it's a good thing the Germans didn't have computers then, because if they had, the Gestapo would have been the best man at the second wedding. Mm, yeah, <laughs> yeah, funny and, and not funny at the same time. Uh, you know, Barry, I, I, I have to ask you, do you mind sharing how many years young you are? Um, I'm 82. Wow. Well, you know, thank you for being our first uh, over 80-year-old person on our show. Our producer, Mark, and Dorothy both have been saying, we need to have the wisdom of the elders on the show. And thank you for, for being our first. Philippe, I can't believe I'm the first. 82 is nothing anymore. Once upon a time, it was old. But with medicine and technology and uh, plain old... Uh, uh, life changing, it's not that old anymore. All right, then. You know, Barry, let's make a deal right here and now. When you become a centurion, will you be our first centurion on the show? <laughs> uh, yes, but I hope I don't have to wait that long. You and your show have been a delight, Filippo. Oh, well, I want to hear more. We're not letting you off just yet. Okay. Do okay. you have more okay. time for another story? Uh, Let, uh, what about, uh, obviously, all right, we... um, um, once I went, from North Carolina to Maryland to a football game and wound up for six weeks in Yugoslavia. Uh, I'm not adding anything. I'm not leaving anything out. I went from North Carolina to the <laughs> University of Maryland to see a football game up for six weeks in communist Yugoslavia. That was uh, some train you were on. Exactly. <laughs> now, it, it, uh, I I was a, re a regional officer, the Virginia Carolinas uh, officer, uh, uh, chairman of an organization called the National Student Association. So here I was on my football weekend, and I, by the way, Queen Elizabeth, who was Princess Elizabeth, was in the stadium uh, there, um, um, Bird Stadium in College Park, Maryland. And uh, at halftime, I went to get a hot dog. And who should I run into but our national president? I thought he was in Boulder, Colorado, where our headquarters was. He didn't know where I was. He'd been looking for me. Uh, I said, Bill, here I am. What do you want with me? He said, well, the Yugoslav Union of Students invited us to send a student delegate to the Zagreb Peace Conference, but it's too late now. It's Saturday afternoon, and we State Department's closed. We can't get you a passport. In those days, people didn't have passports. They got passports if they were going somewhere. Mm. I said, Bill, I have a passport from the University of Oslo, Norway, last summer. I'll go. I'll go. So I went. <laughs> and it's not often you go to a football game uh, <laughs> from one state to another and wind up behind the Iron Curtain for six weeks. Yeah, that must have been quite, uh, I, I, I mean, Yugoslavia is one thing already, but to have it be communist at the time and not someplace where Americans technically traveled to, I, I bet there were some life-changing moments you experienced while there. There were, and again, the Italian language comes back. I wanted to know... Uh, on a later trip to Yugoslavia, exactly where the borderline was. We were going from Trieste uh, over into Yugoslavia, which is now the country of Slovenia, that part of it. And I asked the Italian conductor, I said, you know, dove la frontiera? Said, yeah, la frontiera, la frontiera, qui, uh, it's here. And I said, no, 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 here is a big place. I mean, where, dove esattamente è la frontiera? He, he was just a crazy American. And he walked off and didn't, he didn't know and he didn't care. Like you wanted so, to see a line or something? Yeah, I wanted, I wanted to know when I was crossing from the free world into the slave world. Oh, interesting. So I noticed the, the electric post had signs on them. And the sign said, pediculoso. And that means dangerous in right. Italian. Right. So as the train gathered speed, the, uh, we passed those poles quicker and quicker. And the same sign said, Pericoloso, 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 Pericoloso. And all of a sudden, the sign on the next pole did not say Pericoloso. It said, Opasno. 
which means dangerous in Soviet Croatian. And I knew I knew more than the conductor did. I knew where the borderline was. Wow, you 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 uh, you've been a thinking man, and uh, we're so glad that you've uh, been thinking all these years because now we get to share in the wisdom that you've gained. Uh, I have to take a commercial break, but uh, do we have you for a few more minutes? I'd love a couple more stories. Sure. Okay. Well, very Absolutely. good. Well, this is. Filippo Voltaggio with Life Changes with Filippo, and we'll be right back with Barry Farber after this. Today, experience the Quick Fix, a simple process for positive change. Written by Bradley Quick, author, producer, motivational speaker, and host of the award-winning radio talk show, The Quick Fix, with Bradley Quick on CoolChangeRadio.com. Bradley's passion for life is evident in his book, written so you can experience health, find your purpose, and have more effective relationships. Beating insurmountable odds, overcoming death and being paralyzed, Bradley fought his way back so he could help you conquer your struggles. Experience increased health, vitality, passion, and purpose in your life right now with The Quick Fix and read about Bradley's courage, ambition, and determination to live. Whether the issue is your thoughts, your physical body, or you just want to feel better and be happy, The Quick Fix, a simple process for positive change, will change your life. For only $19.95 plus shipping and handling, take positive action now and receive a free guided meditation CD with your order. That's a $20 value free with your order today. Go to BradleyQuick.com. That's BradleyQuick. Com. Take control and begin feeling better now. Get the book and free CD now at BradleyQuick.com. Life Changes with Filippo is a premier radio show presented by Life Changes Network, which is a company whose team has dedicated their lives not only to positive change, but to helping others observe and embrace, honor, and even celebrate their own changes thus enabling a more positive, inspired life and helping to create a more positive and inspired world. From everyday people to corporate giants, celebrities, and children, we are here to help and to serve. With heart and experience, we bring our message and positive intent into your home or corporate office and even through appearances on your favorite shows. If you wish to learn more about Life Changes Life Coaching and a private consultation with one of us, corporate event appearances, or if you would like us to appear on your radio or TV shows, visit LifeChangesWithFilippo.com and click on our representation page. And now a public service announcement from E! News anchor Juliana Ranchek for the National Italian American Foundation. We're fighters. You know, Italians are fighters and we have passion and we take great pride in our work. I truly believe that if I weren't Italian and I didn't have my parents who are the ultimate Italians as role models, I, I really don't believe I would ever have reached my goal. I'm an Italian American and I am so proud of it. The Italian American heritage. Live it. Love it. Celebrate it. Are you achieving your highest potential? Do you know what that looks like? Louise Ashby Life Coaching makes it a mission to bring balance and abundance to every area of your life, giving you the opportunity to do and be all that you've dreamed. Anything is possible if you just believe. Contact author and motivational speaker Louise Ashby for your complimentary session and see if her individualized style is for you. You can email Louise at louiseashby.org. That's L-O-U-I-S-E. A-S-H-B-Y dot org or telephone 323-592-3181. That's Louise at louiseashby.org or telephone 323-592-3181. You are listening to Life Changes with Filippo on the BBS Radio Network with the master of change, Filippo Voltaggio. You can hear tonight's show and all our past shows on our archive, which include luminaries such as New York Times best-selling author Gary Zukov, Oscar-nominated actress Mariel Hemingway, Comedy Central's favorite Kyle Cease, international recording artists The Green Children, and radio and TV personality Shadow Stevens. Visit our website at lifechangeswithfilippo.com or join our community at lifechangesnetwork.com and email your comments and questions to info at lifechangesnetwork.com or comment via Twitter 
at I am Filippo, and on Facebook at Life Changes with Filippo. That's Filippo, F I L I P P O. F I L I P P O, that's me, Filippo, and we're on Life Changes right now with our guest, Barry Farber. We're talking about the book Cocktails with Molotov, an Odyssey of Unlikely Detours. We've heard a couple of those just now. If you want to read a lot more of them, go to Amazon and get it. Superstore.wnd has it. Actually, you can find it all over the net. So, uh, Barry Farber and Cocktails with, uh, uh, with Molotov. Now, I, I have to say this. Uh, besides being a writer, a journalist, a nationally syndicated talk show host, Barry Farber is an excellent storyteller, and I would love if he would share this story. When legendary film director and producer Alfred Hitchcock opened his door to meet the man who would one day be known as the Dean of American Talk Radio, he probably never expected Barry to, fr- to fly, sprawling, spread eagle style toward the floor. Barry, explain yourself. Well, Alfred, this was my first month on the radio, and we got an interview with Alfred Hitchcock because his movie, The Birds, had just come out, but he wouldn't come to our studio. Um, I was a nobody on the air, and um, he invited us to his hotel suite, you know, engineer, portable recording equipment. So when he opened the door and I reached out to shake his hand, my foot caught in the edge of the rug, (laughs) <laughs> and I went sprawling, face down, spread eagle, and on my way to the rug, I knocked over a table and sent a long, thin vase with water and flowers oh. flying across the room like an aerial torpedo. Oh. And there I was lying on the floor. Well, Hitchcock was devastated, standing there aghast. Oh. What had he gotten himself into, you know? So I knew that we had to get this thing moving and make him forget that horrible uh, entree. But my engineer, Frankie Kaplan, uh, began to frown like like uh, something terrible was wrong. And oh. indeed it was. The hotel, St. Regis, where we were, was the only hotel left in New York that had direct current. And our equipment would only work on oh. alternating current. Well, yeah. Frankie and the house engineer had to work that out. Meanwhile, the day is going by, and Hitchcock is furious. So I figured to redeem myself and make him forget all this bad stuff, I had to come at him with a question that was so good that it would redeem me. I wanted the question, my first question, to be such a good question, he would put his arm around me and thank me <laughs> for coming as we left his hotel suite. I finally got it. I got the question that I knew was going to turn him into a fan. Frankie got the equipment rolling. He pointed at me, and I said, Mr. Hitchcock, welcome to these proceedings. Uh, I'm going to give you a scenario and let you direct it. Uh, The scene is a local radio talk show. (laughs) And, And the guest is a famous motion picture producer, and he's going to be murdered. How would you stage it? And without hesitating a second, Alfred Hitchcock in that lugubrious British accent said, well, given the proper interviewer, he could be bored to death. (laughs) Well, we all had a good time at my expense, but I'll tell you, Filippo, I left it in the tape. Uh, I could have taken it out. I left it in the tape, and that sit, that decision has paid off. That has been a life changer since the theme is life changing. It awesome. took character. It took courage. I put up with a lot of ribbing, but I won an awful lot of respect for keeping that self-deprecatory High explosive in that tape. Wow, wow! What, what? You know, uh, halfway through the story, I was regretting I asked you the question because I was cringing throughout the whole thing. Being an interviewer myself, I'm thinking of all the things that have happened. But, but yes, some of these things uh, do build character. What is it that that made you leave it at the time? I just felt dishonest taking it out. 
Uh, I asked him a question. He flattened me like a steamroller. Blessed be the name of the game. It was legitimate. It would have been dishonest to take that line out of the tape. Wow. Given the proper interviewer, he could be bored to death. That <laughs> has to stay there. <laughs> you know, I'm as so- they say, the, the kid has to remain in the picture. That's right. <laughs> That's, wow, wow, great comeback. Uh, wow, we're more, more power to you. You know, I, I, I'd love to ask you about Bob Hope, but was that life-changing? Maybe we need to move to somebody else. Yeah, it, it, it was life-changing. <laughs> what wasn't? I mean, of course, I'm sure it was, but anything you want to share about that? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Give me the... Uh, uh, give, Bob, give me the... Bob Hope. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. I was just saying I'd love to ask you about meeting Bob Hope, rubbing elbows oh, with Bob he Hope. Saved, he didn't save my life. He saved my livelihood. I had what it took to get the job of radio producer. This was before I got my own, three years before I was on the air myself. I had what it took to get the job. I didn't have what it took to keep the job. I didn't know who celebrities were. I'm, I was from North Carolina. To me, a public figure was anybody who'd done jury duty. <laughs> and I was told my job was in jeopardy. I was not delivering the big names to the host, Tex McCrary and Jinx Falkenberg. I noticed in the paper that Bob Hope was at the Hotel Waldorf Astoria. I called, and he answered his own phone right there in the room. Hello, unmistakable voice. <laughs> I said, Mr. Hope, my name is Barry Farber, and I produce the Tex and Jinx radio show. Would you come do our show tonight? It's right there in the Waldorf where you're staying. He said, well, how much do you pay? And he was kidding right there. He was playing with me. He knows that local radio never paid me a thing. I said, Mr. Hope, we don't pay anything, but we'd love to have you. He said, you can't treat me like that. I'm a big star. I said, I know you're a big star, Mr. Hope. That's why we want you. He said, give me one reason why I should come and do your show tonight for no pay. And I don't know how the words came to me, but they did just in time. When he said, give me one reason why I should come do your show tonight. I said, because it's my birthday. He said, what? And I could hear him talking to everybody in his room, in his entourage. He said, this kid, this kid says I should do his radio show tonight because... Because it's his birthday. It was one of the biggest laughs anybody (laughs) ever gave Bob Hope. And he not only came, but he brought Anita Ekberg, who was Hollywood's uh, (laughs) top-rated sex queen at the time. And from that point on, nobody ever said Barry Farber could not deliver the big (laughs) name. Well, Barry, I'd like to add to that story. Uh, And many, 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 many years after that, Bob Hope uh, came to live in Toluca Lake, California. And I lived in Burbank, which is a few miles from Toluca Lake. A friend of mine was coming over for my birthday and stopped to pick up a gift for me in a store and was trying to pick out a card. And uh, Bob Hope walked past him, and it shocked my friend, but Bob Hope was looking at the cards that my friend was looking at. And, and he said, give him this one. And my friend gave me the card that Bob Hope picked out for my birthday. <laughs> well, you and I are related. You and I are related by Bob Hope and birthdays. <laughs> well, you know what? I, 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 I trust that we, it won't be till when you're a hundred years old that we will have you back. I hope it'll be very soon. I'm glad when we called you, you answered the phone and you said yes. Thank you so much, Barry, for having me. It, it is my delight. I have enjoyed this uncommonly. Sono molto lieto da fare la sua conoscenza. Uh, il piacere è tutto mio. Grazie, Barry. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, man. You speak Italian like you're paid by the word. I love to hear it with the right accent. <laughs> well, we'll have to do that on the phone. But for now, we have to run to commercial. So, Barry, you have a great day. You've helped me have one. You're a life changer, Filippo. Thank you very much and best of Mark. Thank you, Barry. Ciao, ciao. 
I am care. Filippo, just like Barry said, and this is Life Changes with Filippo, just like Barry said, and we'll be back with more uh, with our producer, Martha Jure, when we come back. Listen to these words. He would not be beat by forces too fierce for man, woman, or beast. As the going got tougher, his courage increased. It's a little story with a big message, a message that speaks to children of all ages. It's about believing in yourself, overcoming obstacles, and never giving up. It's been called a masterpiece, one of the finest children's books ever written, and a true children's classic. Shadow Stevens has been called Dr. Seuss for the 21st century. His big little book, The Big Galoot, is a story about bullying. Bullying has become an American epidemic, and The Big Galoot talks about it in a way that will touch the heart of a child of four and a grandfather of 104. It's the story of a little boy with size 42 hands, the biggest hands anyone has ever seen, and the kids laugh at him, then the laughter turns mean. They mock him and trip him, and much worse. But throughout it all, Warren Galoot says... I'm a galoot, but I have good luck. You can't get me down. I never give up. A second grader named Chandler said, I thought it was the best funny book I have seen in my life. And we agree. Whoopi Goldberg said, This is a great story. Bravo, Shadow. The Big Galoot is available now as an ebook exclusively on Kindle Fire on Amazon for only $3.98. We strongly urge you to get it for your children, your children's children, or as a gift to yourself. Its message speaks to all of us. Have good luck and never give up. Go to Amazon.com and search for The Big Galoot by Shadow Stevens. There are self-help seminars costing thousands of dollars guaranteeing miraculous transformations. There are compelling speakers and life-changing weekend experiences where you can walk on fire. They all deliver revelations that guarantee you'll come back for the more expensive revelations filled with even greater wonder next month on Fiji. We get addicted to positive, heartfelt, expensive theater. What we really need is a jump start, an awakening. Someone who can give us a reminder that everything we need lies within. Through inspiration and practical knowledge, Dorothy Donahue helps people get grounded and motivated, inspired and energized. It's not just words and affirmations and the power of intention. It's a mindset brought about by a tangible, transcendental experience, an audiovisual, physical, spiritual experience that helps us realize we transform ourselves. We get tools to become the conscious co-creators of lives of unlimited potential. Find out more. Go to DorothyDonahue.com. Life Changes with Filippo is a premier radio show presented by Life Changes Network, which is a company whose team has dedicated their lives not only to positive change, but to helping others observe and embrace, honor, and even celebrate their own changes, thus enabling a more positive, inspired life and helping to create a more positive and inspired world. From everyday people to corporate giants, celebrities, and children, we are here to help and to serve. With heart and experience, we bring our message and positive intent into your home or corporate office and even through appearances on your favorite shows. If you wish to learn more about Life Changes Life Coaching and a private consultation with one of us, corporate event appearances, or if you would like us to appear on your radio or TV shows, visit LifeChangesWithFilippo.com and click on our representation page. What is the one thing that every man, woman, and child have in common? Life Changes. Are you experiencing change at home, at work, at school, or in other areas of your life? Are you looking to make a change, maybe a new job or place to live? How about getting in on a conversation that matters? Join host Filippo on the top-rated BBS radio network show, Life Changes with Filippo, live every Monday night at 7 p.m. For more information, visit lifechangeswithfilippo.com. That's Filippo, F-I-L-I-P-P-O.com. Well, I am Filippo, and uh, this is our producer's wrap with Marc Lejeure, and what an interview with Barry Farber. Man, it doesn't get much better than that. <laughs> just, just, man. I told you I had to bring your A game. Yeah, that's right. He's sharp, quick. Yeah, in Good. many languages. <laughs> in many languages, exactly, exactly. Well, thankfully, we didn't go too far with the French, because that's all I knew. I'm, I've been able to understand more, but man, 26 languages. 
But, but you know, but the art of storytelling, you know, I was thinking the other day, storytelling should be taught in school. Humor, jokes, telling jokes should be taught in schools. It's one of the most important skill. It's the essence of creation, right? I mean, how, go to the native peoples and, and, and you know, even right. any generation, you know, there's a handoff of stories right. that have been told that of life experience, of life changes, which yeah. I was so cool to hear him reference that for each of his stories. And those moments that they were. get handed down and handed down and they tell two people and they tell two <laughs> friends and so on. Right. No, you, you know, I, I, uh, I, I, ever since I was a kid, I used to love to listen to older people speak. I used to hang out whenever my parents had guests over and the guests had children. I, I didn't care to play with the children. I cared to sit at the table and pretend I was drinking coffee or liquor because they'd never let me. But just sit with them and listen to their stories. Uh, that's what I wanted to hear. I didn't want to hear the things going on at school or whatever the kids had to talk about. It's I, you and I have that in common. I've always had a fascination for for the older generation, and obviously, you know, Barry's got another eighty-two years ahead of him. But but for the older generation, the experience and yeah, the, the amazing stories. I mean, think about that lifespan and, and the people that he's met and. And, you know, I, I reference this in, in my own parents and the stories that I hear, but there's so much magic there. Mm. There's because, because the synchronicities, you think about how we are aware of our synchronicities and the stories that, that we're, the moments we're making. But yeah. to hear back the experiences that, that people have had and wonder, you know, what are the odds and think about how that came to be and where they ended up after that and having the ability to see through their eyes, through their storytelling, and look backwards at how their story unfolded. That's a neat thing. You don't get that opportunity when you go through your stories because it's still being written. Yeah, yeah. You know, and actually, like the story about uh, meeting um, oh the birds, uh, Alfred Hitchcock, right? And and that whole fiasco, so to speak. Well, there are interviewers today that have, like, you know, someone interviewing Lady Gaga for the first time or something and having something like that happen to them. If they knew Barry's story, like if Barry were their grandfather and said, yeah, the first time I interviewed, the first time this, the first time, you know, that moment might not be as traumatic. One would say, yeah, this is something I might laugh about for years. This is actually could be a career maker instead of a breaker. It's just how we look at things. But instead, without knowing that that possibility exists, th th he could have just walked out. He could have walked out. He could have, like you said, he could have removed it from the tape. And and you know, and think about you know the the younger ones, like you're I saying. Would have. <laughs> And and you would have no, missed that know, year's right. worth of game changer, like yeah, you no, said. I How know. many? I know, you probably wouldn't have. You would have probably put it on a loop and played it two or three yeah, times. Right. But they wouldn't have had you know, that that game changer, you know, out there to connect with so many people from there forward. You know, they were advised differently. Yeah, and I was reading somebody's blog this morning, and she said how life was changing, and that's why I was reading it, and and how. Her mother was now getting older and has agreed to move into some assisted living or something like that. And I was thinking, you know, I'm not judging her. I don't know her circumstances, and she might not be able to take the time and, and help the mother uh, as the mother needs whatever. But in my case, I grew up with a grandmother in our home, and I can't tell you what a blessing that was to, to mm. have her stories Every single day. Like, my mother didn't have time to tell us stories. My grandmother did. Well, this is a good point, and maybe this is why I have such a fascination with it, is because I didn't have a lot of exposure. Mm. My grandparents on my mother's side were gone before I can recall. My grandfather on my father's side died before I was born, died at a very young age. Uh, an interesting story for another time. He died in, in my father's arms on a hike in China when my dad was 18. Oh. Uh, but uh, 
then my grandmother was the grandparent that was around and that was you know, she lived in North Carolina and we would go there if we were lucky once a year for a vacation wow. in North Carolina and so I would always look forward to that mm. and I would get her storytelling she would tell stories she would right? tell stories right. and, and right. try to bring me up to speed on a lot of that and and that led to later me actually volunteering as a, as a relatively young boy um, with a uh, assisted living home Oh, interesting. And my role was a companion. And I, I, my job was to sit and listen to stories and share. And you could watch. And, and, I, and now, re- looking back on it, I realize how much it affected me because you can watch them relive their stories. You can see the sadness and feel the sadness come up. You can see the joy and the yeah. happiness and the sparkle come back. Yeah. And, and you know, any, anything attached to those stories is relived and recalled and, and enjoyed again. You know, I know our producer Dorothy is a big proponent of this, and we we've all each independently thought about this. And and once when we were talking about it, it's like, yeah, I thought that too. Yeah, I thought that too. And I hope that there are other people that think this too and are out there doing this. But I've always thought, especially some of these kids, what do you call them, latch key or whatever, that don't have a place to go after school, and you have to keep them at the school, or you have to have a guardian, or whatever. What if you brought them over to an, a, 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 an assisted living place where these old people? have stories and they're lonely and they want to share them and they could love children and I, I uh, it just seems so obvious like we're like missing such a key yeah, to know. our development as, as a culture we, there's a complete disconnect there's a complete disconnect. This is a really important point that we bring up. Is there's a complete disconnect between, which is not there in the ancient cultures, in the native cultures. There is a respect, right, for the elders. There is a community right. within, and there's a connectivity between the elders. Right. And the, here, it's, you know, the assisted living home, the convalescent home, and there's a separation. The kids never get that exposure. And look at Barry. With all due respect, I mean, listen, uh, you don't, what do you say to a, a Barry? Okay, now you have to go over there because you're useless. On the contrary, this is so valuable, and I'm so grateful that um, we had him on. Thank you, Barry, Barry Farber, for being with us. I want to thank uh, Dorothy Donahue for making this happen, our producer, and Mark Lejour, uh for co-hosting with me, and our engineer, Doug Newson. Uh, and this is Filippo Voltaggio with Life Changes with Filippo, reminding you that as life happens, we're there for you. Ciao, everyone. You have been listening to Life Changes with Filippo with the master of change, Filippo Voltaggio. Listen live every Monday night at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on the BBS Radio Network and visit us online at lifechangeswithfilippo.com. That's Filippo, F-I-L-I-P-P-O. Today's show has been made possible in part by our sponsors, Ionways Water Systems, Change Your Water, Change Your Life, and Love and Miracles with Dorothy Lee Donahue. To learn more about them, visit the sponsor page of our website. Once again, join us here next week as we consciously explore and embrace the only constant, life changes. Life changes.